Hello and welcome to the Vector Sector. This is Dan Grady and in this episode we're going to be learning how to create realistic looking wood textures in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I created a couple examples right here so you can see what we're going to be doing today. Um, I got a little panel here and wrote wood in it and got another piece over here that's a little curvy. Yeah, and so I think this is a good looking um, final graphic here. Um, I've seen a few different uh, tutorial videos on creating wood textures uh, online and most of the ones I've seen I, I guess I don't really like how the wood texture actually looks it doesn't look real to me um, or it's usually just the same exact tutorial copied from each other people and just reposted which is really lame um, I'm going to show you today how I do wood textures in Illustrator and like I said I think it makes a really pretty a pretty good looking product and also um, it's really simple really fast um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a shape it could be any shape you want it could be a circle star um, but for convenience sake we'll just do uh, wink, another rectangle okay so to create a rectangle, you, you could just hit shortcut M and drag out. Um, this is going to be the gradient we're going to be using, um, but since you wouldn't have that already, uh, I'll just start with red, because I don't know what color your shape is going to be. So what we're going to do is start with a, uh, a wood color, brown, I guess. Uh, if you wanted to do some crazy color wood, go for it. But if you're doing realistic wood, of course you're going to want a brown color. Uh, just find a default swatch, and the swatch is panel that's brown. Um, got this one here. I don't like a lot of the default browns, um, at least in the basic RGB swatches. Um, I think they're kind of ugly and puke looking. So what we're going to do is go to the recolor artwork and I'm going to drag the hue slider just to give us a little bit more of a red tone. I don't really know why. I kind of like my browns have a, be a little bit more reddish. I think it's more rich and attractive looking. Okay. So what we're going to do is with that selected, you can see down here in my, in my tools panel, and this might be in a different place for you depending on where your tools panel is. Um, you're gonna see the swatch down here. I'm already in my fill section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and hold and drag that up into my swatches panel and release it. And there we go, there's my swatch that I created. Go ahead and hit new swatch with that swatch selected. It's gonna bring up that same color right here. We're gonna to go to the color mode, the little twirl down here, go to HSB, which is Hue Saturation Black. And we're going to drag the black slider up a little bit to create a lighter color variation of that brown. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is make sure you have that shape selected and we're gonna turn that into a gradient. You can see the little gradient button down here on my tools panel at the very bottom. Zoink. Okay. Right now it's, bl it's black and white. We're gonna take those colors that we made and we're gonna drag them right into the gradient panel. See how that was done? Okay, and what I need is, I need one more color stop over on this end because I want it dark on the outsides but a light strip going down the middle. If you hold down Alt on your keyboard and then drag out, you'll see it makes a copy. And so that should look pretty good. Oh, right now our gradient is going the wrong way. I want it to go horizontal right now, it's going vertically. I want the, the dark to be on the outsides, on the top and bottom. So what we're gonna do is, in this uh, box right here, we're gonna click, put in 90 and hit tab to enter that amount. Okay, there we go, I'm, I like that gradient. You don't have to use a gradient, but if you want a realistic wood texture, I'd go ahead and use that gradient so it has that added lighting to it. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now, this is really the heart of this effect. Make sure that shape is selected and we're going to go up to Effect and Effect Gallery. You'll see that it's under Photoshop Effects. Yes, this is a raster effect. Um, I'm not going to go over the details of raster graphics as opposed to vector graphics. You do a quick Google search. Um, if you don't know what that is, maybe this video is a little advanced for you. Um, but it's important to know that this is a raster effect, so it is in pixels, so if you scale this up and up and up, it's going to get distorted and low res unlike 
a vector graphic. Um, but if you start with a large size already, you shouldn't have any problems with printing um, and, or this displaying at low res. Okay, you're gonna see up here, I have um, in the effect gallery, you're gonna have different little twirl downs. Um, you're gonna to wanna to look under the texture twirl down and we're going to be selecting grain. You see you have a lot of different stuff in here. Um, I used to hate the effect gallery and never used to use it at all because I always thought the effects were super ugly. Um, but if you use it right, you can get some really neat looking graphics out of this. Um, we're gonna be using grain, and I think by default, it's going to, maybe on your screen, look like this, uh, which is horrible looking. So you're gonna think, how's this gonna look like wood? This is awful. Um, but what we're going to do, you're gonna see in grain type over here, we're gonna click on that and make sure we have horizontal. If your wood's flipped up the other way, vertical, you're gonna to wanna to hit vertical grain type and it'll put the lines the other way. But I like how the horizontal grain looks. And you're gonna see a couple sliders up here. We have intensity and contrast. Um, you can play around with those. Um, I kinda like what this looks like right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Okay, and if that's all you need is that wood texture, we're pretty much done at this point. Um, there's a wood texture, I think it looks really good. This isn't um, maybe the best wood texture as far as realism goes at this point because it's so straight. Um, you wouldn't normally have grain running that straight. This is something that looks more like machine cut or something that's like a wood floor paneling. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going, we're going to add some knots to this wood to give a little bit more texture and a little bit more realism. Okay, so there's probably a lot of different ways to make knots in this wood. Um, and I don't even know if this is the best way. This is just the way I kind of came up with on top of my head for how to make the these knots. Go ahead and make an ellipse and we're going to select that color that we made earlier. Okay, make sure that's selected and go up to Effect, Distort and Transform Roughen. I really love this effect. I don't think it's used enough. Um, it's one of my favorite effects in Illustrator um, because it takes shapes and makes them unperfect. Um, it's a really quick way to add random variables to your shapes. So I'm gonna make sure that's on smooth. Um, put the size down a little bit more, hit okay. Go to object, expand appearance when you're done to make sure the anchor points go to the outside of that new shape we created. And I like that, that's more like a realistic wood knot. It's kind of, kind of deformed, kind of random. Um, I'm gonna to wanna to add some splits also to this wood. So I'm gonna hit A to get my direct selection tool and grab one of these anchor points and shift drag up. There we go. If you want your um, your split to be a little bit more tight or a little bit more skinny, you go ahead and hit P to bring up the pen tool and hit plus on the keyboard. And we're gonna add anchor points right here and here. Now I have a tighter split that I could drag out. If I grab this right, okay, we're good. There we go. Okay, I'm liking how that's looking. Um, to add a little depth to this split, go ahead and select it hit scale and while holding shift scale down that shape and before letting go press alt on the keyboard and then let go of your mouse and that's going to create a copy um, right now it's the same color so go up to the recolor artwork dialog box and go to edit make sure that chain is linked um, it doesn't matter in this color because we're only changing one color but i do that out of habit because um, a lot of times I'm changing whole sets of colors. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Shrink it down. Hit Alt. Go up to Recolor Artwork. And using the black slider, I'm going to make that just a little darker. Okay, I'm going to select everything. Hit Command-G to group it. All right. Now I'm going to take this knot I'm going to put it into the wood. And right now it looks horrible. I, I realize that. Um, but it's going to look awesome in a second. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. Okay. Now I'm going to add some transparency to this. That's really going to help. Um, it's kind of experiment at this point. I'm going to do 70%. You can also try different blending modes. Um, 
to make it a little bit more realistic, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna go to normal. Um, if that still doesn't look good to you, go up to the recolor artwork dialog box again, hit edit, make sure you hit that chain link, and you could drag down the black slider to make that a little darker or a little lighter. I'm pretty happy with that right there. Maybe not as good as my other knots that I made earlier, but this is, this is not too shabby. Okay, I'm gonna make a copy of this. I'm gonna rotate it around, hit scale without hitting shift so it kind of stretches it. I'm just making another knot, but make it a little different by using scale and rotation. If you would want to as well, you could also go to the liquify tools and I'm gonna use the twirl tool. And I'm gonna try that guy out on this knot right here. I'm gonna double click this knot so I isolate it. So I'm not twirling the actual wood texture. Okay, let's see what happens when I just select everything. There we go. Now that knot's a little twirled up there. Okay, so in my example up here, I added in some screws and I also added in some some text will look like it's carved in there. Um, experiment with this wood texture and see what you could come up with using these techniques. One last thing before we go, I, I mentioned the document raster effect settings. You're gonna find those up in effect. You'll see a document raster effect settings. Um, by default, a lot of you will probably have it set to screen like this. So I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but if your wood is looking horrible, horribly bad, it looks like this. Make sure you go up to Effect, Document Raster Effect Settings, and put your resolution a little higher. This is going to increase your file size, but it'll also make your product look way, way better. Okay, there we go. And that is how you create fast and easy, realistic looking wood textures in Adobe Illustrator. Um, if you are on Facebook, go ahead and search the vector sector and join my Facebook page, I add all sorts of cool tips to that page and it's a really fun community. So join me over there and until then, see you next time.